Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. What does it cost to learn to fly? Now this, I can talk about all day long because actually I find that there's a lot of misinformation out there or misleading information out there uh, given to people from various schools. So I, I do quite often have a little bit of a rant about this if I'm being perfectly honest because I like to give people accurate information so that they don't get misled into a course of training. I would rather put somebody off who can't afford to learn to fly than talk them into a course and let them run out of money and effectively waste money trying to learn to fly. Now, I'm going to give you an example on this. Um, I actually had somebody call me a few weeks ago looking to do helicopter training and they said, oh, the school quoted me £12,000 to get a helicopter PPL. Now, a helicopter PPL in anyone's money is going to be somewhere in the region of 17 to 25,000 pounds if you include all of the costs and all of the additional hours that the average student takes. Now, this particular school, all they'd quoted them for was for the minimum hours at a discounted rate, providing that they bought the course up front. So they, they weren't asking them for. Um, you know, instalment payments or even pay as you go. It was, oh, you've got to pay, you know, you've got to buy a massive block of hours uh, to do it, to get this price. So it was very, very misleading. And there was no other cost factored in there whatsoever. There was no landing fees. There was no cost for exams, no cost for medicals, absolutely nothing. And this guy walked away genuinely believing that he was going to get his helicopter PPL in £12,000. And he was looking for me to price match that or even perhaps do it cheaper. So, yeah, I can I can get quite cross about this because there's a lot of misleading information out there, which is bad. You know, it's headline pricing to get people sucked in. Um, and once they're on a course of training, they feel that they have to try and come up with the rest of the money to get it done. So I would much rather talk somebody out of the flight training and say, look, come back when it's a better time for you and do it properly. But this is what it could potentially cost you. And by the way, there is no limit to how much your flight training can cost you. You know, if it takes you 100 hours to get an aeroplane PPL, it's 100 hours. It's on competency. Okay, it is on competency. So although the minimum hours for a PPL are 45, it could take you 100 it depends on you, okay? So so you need to be aware of that. And it's not spoken about enough. So anyway, rant over. Let's get into the the uh, details. So I'm going to go through every, every foreseeable cost I think you could incur when learning to fly and give you an average case scenario um, and a kind of price bracket for it. Um, but it's not limited to that. Okay, it's not limited to that. If you, you know, like I say, if it takes you longer, it takes you longer. It's on competency. Um, if you'd like to think, though, that obviously if you were getting to become a 100 hour pilot, that at some point your flying school would have been honest enough to say to you, look, you're not doing as, as well as you should be doing. So we need to change this, this and this. And by the way, we forecast that it's going to take you at least to here to get where to where you need to be. So you know, if that's the right course of action for you, then we'll continue. But if not, perhaps you want to consider not continuing. So there's a, you know, I'm not saying people are dishonest, but they certainly withhold back a lot of information, which potentially could be the difference between you starting now or starting in two years time um, when you know that your mortgage is paid off or whatever and whatever the circumstances. So, right, deep breath. (laughs) So, um, PPLA, looking at a minimum of 45 hours training. Now, if you were to take a middle of the road aeroplane, uh, obviously they, they tend to differ in price between aircraft engine size and things like that. So if you take a middle of the road training aircraft, 45 hours is going to cost you £9,000. Okay. Now, training equipment, you can buy a starter pack 
which has uh, pretty much everything you're going to need in terms of equipment in there, minus a few things. Uh, so the starter pack, you can get these from Pooleys is a, a good supplier of um, PPL starter packs. They are £239 um, for the starter pack. That has all your revision material, your books, um, charts, kneeboard, all that kind of stuff in there. You're probably going to want to consider getting your own headset to uh, communicate inside the aircraft. Most schools do have headsets you can borrow, uh, but it's more hygienic to have your own. You know it's only been on your head, um, especially around the whole COVID thing that's been knocking around for, for a while now. Um, you've, you're the only person who's worn this headset, so you, you know that. And also you know it works properly. Okay, So there's nothing worse than borrowing a second-hand headset off somebody... Uh, to go flying with and then you can't hear properly and or the instructor can't hear you properly because the microphone's not working properly it can ruin a lesson so make sure you've got a decent headset that works properly you're going to need in most airfields a high visibility vest to wear um, so you can be seen on the uh, apron now those you can pick them up literally for three or four quid or you know, it doesn't really matter um, you know as long as they're a high visibility vest uh, we sell branded ones, most schools sell branded ones, the branded ones are 12 quid, but like I say, you can literally pick them up for sort of 4 quid for a, you know, an unbranded uh, cheap high-vis vest. You're going to need a checklist for your aircraft, most checklists are 10 or 12 pounds. Um, your skills test, which you take at the end of your training, including the examiner and aircraft hire, is going to cost you somewhere in the region of 504 pounds. Um, your radio telephony license test, you're going to be looking uh, somewhere in the region of 150 to £200 uh, for that, depending on which examiner it is. Your theory exams, the electronic theory exams now are £35 each. So there's nine of those. We'll go into the theory a bit later on, but there's nine of those. So even if you pass them the first time, that's going to set you back. £315 just for a first attempt on each one. Now we said the minimum hours are 45 but actually the average student takes 10 to 15 hours longer than the minimum. So never ever budget for 45 hours because although it can be done you're going to need to be flying incredibly frequently to do that and uh, most people just don't do it. Okay so the average is 10 to 15 hours over but like I said it's based on competency okay so if you take 70 hours 80 hours 90 hours 100 hours that's what it is you've got to demonstrate that competency to be able to complete the course now ground school courses they vary in price if you want to uh, have ground school courses i've seen them go anywhere up to 1700 pounds um for all nine uh, for all nine subjects um but let's base it on an average course cost of £900, which is about what it's usually going to cost you for, for nine subjects. And your medical. Your medical, anywhere between £150 and, and £200 for the, for the actual medical itself. And then if you need additional tests, that can cost more as well. Uh, landing fees. They vary from airfield to airfield, but I would envisage you're going to be looking somewhere between six hundred and a thousand pounds in landing fees, and then you've got your license application at the end of the course, which is two hundred pounds. So, if you passed your skills test on the first attempt, which to be honest, you know most people do, um, so if we take all of those things we've just spoken about into account, already we're at around about £15,700. Now, that's a lot more than the £9,000 just for the 45 hours, okay? So you need to be thinking like this. Build up all the things that you're going to need um, when you're learning to fly to make sure you've got an accurate costing for it. Like I said, there is no limit to how many hours you take, but you can you can kind of look at the averages and say most people are taking 10 to 15 hours longer. So these are the things you need to consider, like I say, flying hours, flight equipment, um, skills test, theory exams, FRTOL test, ground schooling, medical, landing fees and license application. And that kind of puts us in the 10 
to 16,000 really ballpark for a PPL for an average student and the lap all because it's 15 hours shorter in in its duration you could save around about three thousand pounds there so let's call it um around about thirteen thousand uh as a top kind of indicator there so anywhere really between eight and thirteen thousand pounds so you can easily see that these costs build up and build up and like I say if you keep failing ground exams and you have to retake and retake them these costs just just keep going up so never look at the minimum hours as an indication to how much your course is going to cost you it really is a, is a poor way of doing it and you know a lot of people use that as a headline price or you can get a lap for six thousand pounds well no you can't because there's absolutely no way in the world that the average person does it in 30 hours in the first place and the flight equipment landing fees and everything else ground school and exams are not free they need to be paid for so we're getting up to this uh, these figures of eight to thirteen thousand for a lap or likewise with the ppl steen so it's not you know an exact science you need to look at what all these things cost you and look at what the potential cost could be and obviously the faster you do the course um usually the cheaper it becomes because you have that level of consistency where you're not backtracking so much over over the things that you do so it's, it's more likely that you're going to pass in lower hours than if you did it over a longer period of time so yeah that's that's kind of the ballpark prices we're looking at to do it now there are various different ways that um schools uh, take payments for these things you can buy hours in bulk at some schools um you can even pay for a whole course in its entirety at the minimum hours in some schools i recommend you don't do that okay the reason being is let's say and I, I have seen examples of this by the way so i warn you um let's say you pay a school ten thousand pounds for the minimum hours and some equipment okay if they go bust or something happens to that school they've got your money okay now you don't want to be trying to go to them to get your money back if they've gone bust because you, you're not going to get it okay as simple as that you're not going to get it or if you're lucky you might get some of it okay so yes pay in small installments if you're comfortable with that you know no more than a few thousand if it gets you a better deal but please please don't pay a school up front for all of the flight training because it really could um have a tremendous effect on you financially if, if it goes wrong Okay. The other thing I've seen with schools who take massive upfront payments as well, um, which I don't particularly like, we had a student who came to us and he wanted to get his PPL done quickly and we spoke to him and he was actually looking at doing our fast track course at the time, but he chose another flying school um, based on the fact that they were ever so slightly cheaper. Okay. And he liked the aeroplane that they had as well. So I said to him at the time, you know, I wish you all the best with your flight training. If if anything goes wrong or you're not happy, then please do come back to us. So anyway, he did come back to us because he asked us to do some ground training for him, some ground school training. Um, but he also uh, came back and said that he was really struggling to get bookings for his flight lessons now he'd paid up front for the minimum hours on the course and he was struggling to get flight lessons the school has his money and he's struggling to get flight lessons now if you've paid for the course up front you should be able to get as many lessons as you want within reason um, but no he couldn't he was limited to I think it was like one lesson a week or something something like that which I, I thought was a little bit unreasonable based on the fact that he had bought the course up front um, albeit he hadn't done his research into it and found that out before he gave him the money but nevertheless um, that was another reason why I think it's a bad idea to give a school the, all of the money for the course up front um, most schools will charge you either in smaller installments so perhaps you buy a block of hours say two three thousand pounds 
or you pay at the end of your lesson, which is a more flexible approach. And now most charges for aircraft are done on what we call flight time, which is breaks off. So the time in which the aircraft moves under its own power to breaks on when the aircraft comes to a standstill and is shut down. That's that's the time you're usually charged for. And um, that would be charged at an hourly rate, uh, which you will be given for that particular aircraft. When you're looking at your flying school, like I say, let's go to them and ask them for all these estimated costings. So you want the um, the hourly rate of the aircraft. You want to know if the instructor uh, cost is within that, because sometimes if you look at hourly rates of aircraft, they can look you know very competitive compared to other schools. But then somewhere on the web page, there'll be a little asterisk or something saying, you know, please add 45 quid for the instructor, which then makes it either comparable or perhaps marginally more expensive than other schools so ask them if the flight hours include the you know the aircraft and the instructor um, get a cost on the flight equipment you know find out what they're charging for the FRTOL tests um, if they do medicals what they are um, theory exams what the charges are for those ground schooling medicals like I say, landing fees, license application, they're all the things that build up the entire cost of your training. Please note that this episode was recorded at the back end of 2021, so prices quoted are relevant to then. Now in 2022, the ballpark figure would be somewhere between eleven and a half and £17,000. And I'd probably um, look at prices inflating annually of somewhere between 10 and 15 percent in the current climate if you like this episode please like subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode